fucking lesson. Mr. Sharp and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. It's been fantastic to actually see the YouTubes have been watched, to look at Compass Learning Tasks and see that so many students have uploaded their work, all of their work for all of the outcome tasks so far. And with yesterday's energy systems video, so good to see that so many of you jumped on there and hopefully took some notes and, and gained a little bit of understanding to help you move forward. Today, it's a bit of a blend of two different types of activities. The first part of the activity is something that's really gonna help you in the future, similar to the energy systems from yesterday. And the second part is to try and bring you back to what you've learned in the past couple of weeks and try and actually put that into practice now so that you are ready when it comes time for the sack at the end of this term. When you return into the classroom, we want to give you some face-to-face -face help with the work that's been online. But if people are behind on any of their work, it's going to be very hard to play catch up. So you can also take some time this lesson because the activity I've given you won't take a full 75 minutes to make sure that in all of those outcome tasks, everything has been uploaded. There's no blank documents up there. It's the work, it's completed, and there's no redemptions that are going to be coming up when Mr. Sharp and I find the time to go through every single one of those documents in the next week or so. So... Today's lesson should be pretty exciting for you. Let's go through a few things. Fake Bird can't do it. Hits the jumper, but I think Bird played pretty well defensively against Jordan. Man. Hopefully watching that stuff gets you guys as excited as it does uh, Mr. Sharp and I. Now, there's a reason why you just watch that. Those are some of the best and greatest athletes in the world in some very different sports. Whether it be the explosiveness of the high jumper, whether it be Michael Jordan's explosiveness to dunk over the top of a, a defender, or his finesse and ability to be agile, to move side to side with Larry Bird defending him, or whether it be the accuracy and poise of Tiger Woods. The explosiveness with the agility, with the ability to play for four hour games of Rafael Nadal or Federer, or is it the 10 second sprint around the world, world famous Usain Bolt? Each of those athletes could potentially be considered the greatest in the world, but they all play a very different game, a very different sport. They all have different needs. They all need to train differently. And that's where today's activity comes into play. Each athlete needs a specific program. Each athlete needs to train differently. You would not write the same training program for Michael Jordan as you would Tiger Woods. You would not write the same program for Usain Bolt as you would Roger Federer or Rafael Nadal. And so I'm not expecting you guys to know how to write proper training programs at this stage. The formatting, how many sets, how many reps, what muscles should I work on, all of those things will come to you as you go through year 11 and year 12. But one thing that stays in practice throughout all of these years until you finish school, if you continue down the PE pathway, is the fact that you are going to need to write training programs. So Mr. Sharp and I thought, okay, we've done a bit of enhancement of athletes' abilities. We've actually looked at recovery. We've looked at legal performance enhancers. We've looked at all of these things so far. 
And last week, or yesterday, you guys were exposed to some energy systems and how they all work together to make the muscles move. Right now, should be fresh in your mind, you should be sitting there with a wealth of knowledge of how you can actually analyze an athlete and provide them with some advice. So today's activity, which is up on Compass, is actually a first round draft of writing a training program. And you need to select any athlete from any sport and just tell us your reason for choice. Could be one of the ones you've seen, might be somebody else, but the more that they are well known, the more publicity that there'll be, the more YouTube footage there'll be for you to watch. I want you to think about what muscles they use. Do they need explosive strength or do they need to have one strong push that goes over a long period of time like a sumo wrestler? So what sort of strength training would you do? Would you do upper body? Would you do lower body? Do you need wrist strengthening or do you need leg strengthening? Is it about being able to jump high or is it about having a stable base like a Tiger Woods? What sort of training would you do for them in terms of muscle development? The next thing, what sort of conditioning? Do they need to be able to run long distances? Do they need to be able to sprint, stop, sprint, stop? What sort of conditioning does that athlete need to do? Is it maybe the high jumper who only needs to sprint for about 10 steps and then explode as high as possible? What sort of running do they need to do? Is it leaping and bounding instead of long distance running? Then go back to your legal performance enhancements. What sort of advice could you give this athlete that you chose about how to enhance their performance from a legal standpoint? Try and do it closed book if you can and see what you remember from those two weeks worth of legal performance lessons. And finally, recovery from exercise. From the click view that you watched and the PowerPoint that you actually saw, what sort of recovery advice would you give to that athlete? And any time that you want to take this to the next level, then give us reasons as to why you chose that. I chose fart leg running because blah, blah, blah. What is fart leg running? Google it. You are at home. You have the internet as a resource. Google this stuff. I want you to have your best attempt at writing some advice for an athlete for us. See you soon.